2016, this year, is so important in the life of our nation. For all of us who are abroad, you know, we really should not care because our life there is good, but it cannot be. We have to come back and talk to you who live here because 2016 is life and death for our nation. It is that important. So, you know, it doesn't matter that we take time from our family, from our jobs. We have to tell you that you, we, have the power to choose the right path or the wrong path. There are really only two roads. Either the road to up and prosperity and peace or road back again to corruption and, you know, poor man of Asia. Now, why am I saying that 2016 is our time to rise? The time of the Philippines to rise. Okay, let me give you a viewpoint from someone who left the Philippines in the 1960s. Many of 10 million Filipinos now are outside of the Philippines. When we left, when I left late 1960s, we were only 40 million. Within one generation, Bohay Paco, we have more than double. We are 102 million. And half of these are 35 years and under. I know many of us are my age, but this election is going to be decided by those who have not even experienced martial law. So it is very important for us, for those of you who have listened to martial law, that what I say to you should be spread out to the rest of our people. In 1965, our president, Ferdinand Marcos, became president by a wide margin. All right? And for the first time in the history of the Philippines, President Marcos was re-elected in 1969. Again, you know, Mr. History Making. The Constitution says only two thirds, eight years. And what happened? In 1973, he would have finished his term. But on September 21, 1972, will mark a very big red mark in our history. September 21, 1972, what happened? Martial law. Okay, we all know that those who were born and who were already an adult in 1972. And it's like a blanket of darkness came over the Philippines. Because not only were all freedoms taken away, that young people's lives were taken away, but also a culture of corruption zip down deep roots into our very soul so that for 21 years we got accustomed to corruption para bang sabi natin you're a politician we expect you to steal na magnakaw para bang dumala na tayo ng sense of ethics that was 21 years finally the most important thing happened na sabi natin tama na husto na in August 21, 1983, Noy Aquino was gunned down from the airport. Ni hindi pa siya nakakatungtong. He was gunned down. And then nagising na tayo ang mga Pilipino. It took us three years to say, Tama na, gusto na, people power. February 25, 1986. So, in people power 1986, Cory Aquino was elected as president. Meaning, meaning to say, nagkaroon ng eleksyon, okay, on the, on the board, parang panalo si Marcos. But in reality, the seven women who were watching the returns, they walked out kasi alam nila yung nakikita nila dito, iba sa board. So in effect, Cory Aquino became president. Palakas-lakas ng ating kata. We were so happy. Finally, Marcos out, Cory Aquino in. Uh, Cory Aquino was almost like a saint. But, because she didn't have any experience in government, in a way, parang napaligi na siya ng ahas. At isa pa, for seven years out of six years, kudeta. Kudeta means cut the state, kill the king. The army wanted to take her out. Six kudeta under the term of Cory Aquino. So, wala masyadong nangyari. Although, freedom of the press came back in, but corruption was still down down into our very soul. Pinalitan siya ni Fidel Ramos. Akyat na naman ang Pilipinas. But Fidel Ramos understood six years is not enough. So he instituted Chacha, Charter Change. For those of you who remember, you know, all of us were saying, what? Another six years? Kahit na magaling ka? No. 
we just had the experience of 21 years of martial law. We don't want too long a person in power. So, walang nangyari sa Chacha. Pinalitan siya ni Era. Ay, nako naman si Era. Just go. So, what happened? The people, meaning to say, civil society, the church, again, army, and finally, the business people said, out with him, Edsa too. Unless si Era, dating ngayon ang Vice President, GMA. GMA, because she was the daughter of but just Dago Makapagal, the honest man from Lubao, we were all happy for her. And she started good things. And so when she ran for election in 2010, she won. Okay? Pasok ngayon. Good people in her government. Cesar Purisima and um, Ding Kisoliman and Ding Deles and Butch Abad and Meli Nicolas, my sister. But in July, Two years later, nakikita nila corruption. Corruption has not stopped. And it is very close to Malacanang itself. So sabi nila, we are going to quit the Hayaten. Alis sila lahat. So umalis yung good, pasok yung bad. So the rest of President GMA was known for corruption all the way to Washington. So when we were supposed to be given 350 million for the Millennium Funds, they withhold it from GMA. In Intai, hanggang sa President Noynoy, in 2010, was elected president. Dun lang binigay. So, you know, and what happened during this all this time? Nasa New York ako, April 2006. Front page ng New York Times. The most corrupt nation, Philippines. Sus, Maria Josef naman, pahiya ako. Okay, and then I would attend uh, international bodies, international uh, meetings, is that business, and they would say investment in China, billion, billion, billion. Okay, one billion, sila okay yon. Investment in Vietnam, ten billion. Wow, Vietnam was just free after the Vietnam War, 1975. Naku, ten billion ang investment. Indonesia, twelve billion. Uh, you know, all of our Asian countries, and dami. Philippines. Two billion lang. Sabi ko, bakit naman? Why? Why are you not investing in the Philippines? Wrong address. <laughs> Wrong address daw tayo? Basically because we were in the top list of the 10 most corrupt nation in the world. That's 2006. I mean, that's all throughout. From 1986 to 2010, we were so in despair, so that in August 1, 2009, Corey, Aquino died. And suddenly, from our people, we had this groundwell of support saying, Noy Noy, we want Noy Noy. And that's the time when Maro has stepped down, didn't want to, hearing what the people were saying, and Noy Noy Aquino said, all right, this is the start of something new. The culture of corruption had deep roots, you cut off the tree, but there's still deep roots. So, unang unang explanation niya, kung walang korap, walang mahirap. With his administration, he wanted to show that there should be no corruption from the top level of government. Kung walang korap, walang mahirap. And then you will understand, what did that really mean? So, ang unang impeach was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Corona. When I read it in the papers, wow! No other country in the world was able to impeach a chief justice for corruption. Philippines lang. Medyo naman nasayahan ako. Because, because I knew it took a lot for a chief justice to be impeached. And then in a way, God helped us. God helped us because who would think that Ben Hur Chu, the nephew of Janet Napoles, would be impeached not in prison, okay? Basta hindi siya pinakawalan ng tatlong buwan sa bahay ni Janet. So when he come out in three months, ano ginawa niya? So, um, Senate. And he started to sing. Ano ang sinabi niya? That Janet Napoles has this wonderful technique, a wonderful project, creating several different not-for-profit. And then would talk to senators 
220 million pesos a year for pork barrel or pidaf, and congressmen 40 million pesos a month a year for pidaf. That if they want, they can choose several of her not-for-profit, give them, give her the pidaf, she will keep 30%. And 70% goes back to the senator because those not-for-profit were empty. They were ghost. Walang laman. 100% sa bulsa. Kung walang corrupt, walang mahirap. Can you imagine that million billions of pesos na pumasok sa coffers ni Janet Napoles? And what happened? I did not believe it could happen. The most powerful three senators of the Philippines was arrested and in prison. Wow! Enrile, Estrada, and Revilla. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. Naku, just go. So, with all of that, and then she appointed Tim Enares as BIR. Sino, who, whom did she find, find a case against act, very famous actors, dentists, Lawyers, na hindi nagbabayad ng income tax. So, first year pa lamang, wow, lahat tayo, lahat tayo, because we pay income tax in the U.S. They paid income tax, so our revenues rose high. Second year, again high. Nakita yan ng mga international bodies. And therefore, when the president started in 2010, we were bottom third. 134th tayo out of 175 countries. By 2015, we are now 85 in the world. Middle na tayo. We are in the middle. Meaning to say that the Philippines is no longer bottom third. We were out of the 10 most corrupt nation in the world. So, wala na tayo doon. Middle na tayo. By in Transparency International. Next. World Bank says, sa umpisa, bottom third di tayo. 144th place. Now, 95, middle na tayo in terms of ease of doing business in the Philippines. Next. World Economic Forum, 85th tayo. Okay? And in 2010, akyat natin, 52nd place na tayo. So all of this are happening because President Noy Noy and his cabinet started to show the world we are now transparent. We are now accountab accountable and we have integrity. So, kita agad yan. Nakita nila from our economic results. And so, finally, in 2014, gave us triple B. Ano ibig sabihin ng triple B? That means to say, we are now reliable. Uutang ang country, and we can ex they can expect, yung nagpapautang sa atin, that we will pay it back. Because, kung kayo din, you want to borrow from the bank, Kung hindi kayo nagbabayad ng utang, zero, you will, they will not lend you. Okay. If your credit rating is bad, they will not lend you. Or if they lend you, ang taas-taas ng interest. So, now, triple B tayo. We are now investment grade. So, ang ating utang from other institutions, when our interest was 9, 8, 9, 10%, 3, 4% na lang. Ang daming savings. Because we have plenty of savings, Bayad ng utang. So, babadi ng ating utang. And it's not only S&P. Moody's is also an international rating agency. Triple B din tayo. Finch, another the third. Triple B. So, first time in the history of the Philippines, 117 years, we became investment grade. Nagbabayad tayo ng utang. Palakpang natin naman ng Pilipinas. Let us clap for ourselves. And because of that, our growth since 2010 has been 6%, 7%, 5%, and 3 fourths percent. So we are now considered by Bloomberg, we are in the top 20 economies in the world, and we are second to China if we keep it up. Palakpakan natin ng Filipinas. So for the first time, we are now able, because we have money, hindi na ninanakaw, hindi na nasa bulsa, we have money to invest in two most important things, our people and infrastructure. Unang una, 2010, I don't know about you, but I know public school here in Manila, you know, during my time, Aurolio, Magsaysay, Rizal, uh, 
Public school. Yes, Arellano. Ang gagaling. But, when I learned that 70 people in one classroom, 80, how can you learn? Isang teacher, 80, kumisan, wala pang, wala pang lamesa, nasa, nasa, you know, under the trees. But, in 2016, 180 classrooms have been built so that the people in public school who cannot afford to be in private school will have 45 desks, chairs, and a teacher. So, that's one thing. Okay? Na, you know, very, very solid accomplishments. Next. Itong pinaka-importante. Because we are almost, more or less, here. We are middle class. We don't know about this. This is the four Ps. The poorest of the poor. Anong ibig sabihin ng poorest of the poor? One day in a week, hindi sila kumakain. That's the poorest of the poor. And we have around 30 million of the poorest of the poor. Because of this CCT, conditional cash transfer. If they don't send their children to school, wala sila niyan. Bunsi sila, hindi sila pumupunta sa ospital, wala. Yung asawa nila, kinukuha yung pera para uminom, wala. Okay, conditional. Hindi lamang darating sa iyo. And so, 4 million, 400,000 of the poorest of the poor are not receiving money. If you are living close to land bank, because in Sorsogon, may land bank, Every 15th and every 30th, ang haba-haba ng linya. Why? Because direct sa kanila. Hindi through the congressman, hindi through the uh, barangay captain, para pahingi, pahingi. No, it's directly to them. And that is why, that is why, kung walang korap, walang mahirap, that is a help to them. Sasabihin nyo, aba, hingi na lang ng silingi na sila, o paano naman? You know, will that go on forever? No, it will not. Because now, 400,000 because of this, 400,000 of their children was able to go to uh, graduate in high school. Hindi na patay gluto, at least nakatapos ng high school. Feel health. That the feel health is only for a select few. Only around 62% of the population. Ngayon, 90 million ang nakakarisipin ng feel health. I'm sure all of you here who live here, have some form of field health. So you don't have to, ay nako, especially for the poor, ay nako, wala akong pera, you know, ay itay na lang mamatay. So that is also another way that kung walang korap, walang mahirap. Next. Infrastructure. Infrastructure means roads, bridges, airport, hospitals, high school. I must tell you, I visit Sorsogon, where I came from, and where I have a school, at least four times a year. In the previous years, pagdating sa air plano sa Ligaspi, it will take one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. But I was just there in August. Less than an hour, naroon na kami. Why? Because the roads have been widened. And the bridges na pagkumukulang, tanggal, made of cement. And when I went to see the public school, provincial high school. Wow, bagong bago. It was burnt two years ago. Normally, you will wait ten years bago matapos. In two years, tapos, pintado ang ganda. And we have a new provincial hospital with 200 beds. And that is only so Sugon. If you go to the other provinces, you will see roads have been widened. Okay. So, yan lahat nangyayari. And you ask your own province mates. Ganyan din nangyayari sa inyong sariling provinces. Because now, 570 billion pesos are being spent for infrastructure. At wala yung cash yung luan, ha? <laughs> Babes Singson of uh, the Department of Public Works, wala yung, oh, ipigyan mo ako ng 30%. No. Okay. Labas sa mga infrastructure. So for the first time, ito na ang expenses sa infrastructure. Pakya. And the Philippines is like an airplane. We are taking off. We are taking off. But we are not yet cruising. That's why I'm saying 2016 is so important. Because the plane may have taken off, but it can go down again. It can fall again. So, anong bedrock ng daang matuwid? What did President Noy Noy try to do? He tried to impose these three principles. Accountability, transparency, and integrity. Integrity 
means hindi nagnanakaw. And so, President Noynoy has studied, whatever you say about him, this is his legacy. And because he worked hard on it, he doesn't want it to disappear. So he wants it to continue. He, in a way, he wants a second term. But the Constitution prohibits a second term, di na pwede. So he's choosing his second term. And who is that? That is Marojas. So Marojas is saying, we have the possibility now of really putting the Philippines on the map. Okay? Center of growth, development, and modernity in Asia. We have the chance, 2016. And so President Noynoy knows that too. That's why he said, my successor will be Mar Rojas. Pinoy chose Mar. Not anybody else, but Mar, a worthy successor, the second term of President Noynoy. And what is, what is the background of Mar Rojas? They believe in Bayan Muna, Pago Sarili. Because the first president, Manuel Rojas, has a very interesting history, especially referring to Israel. We were the only country that voted for Israel that moved it to majority vote and Israel became a nation. So, pasalamat na mabuti ng Israel sa atin. Aside from during the time of Manuel Quezon, we were the only country in the whole world that accepted the Jews that were fleeing Germany. Otherwise, they would have been killed. And because of that, we are the only country in the world that do not need a tourist visa to enter Israel. Now, why Mar Rojas? Because Mar graduated from Wharton School of Economics in 1987. Did he come to, New to the Philippines? No. He was he entered investment banking field in New York, Allen and Company. For seven years, he was working there. Ganda ng salary niya, ganda ng apartment niya. But in 1993, what happened? His brother died suddenly. So tawag yung nanay niya, Judy. Mar, you have to come home. You have to continue the work of your brother. Bayan mo na bago sarili. Iniwan niya yung magandang apartment niya sa New York. Very good job because I spoke to the partner of Allen and Company. And he said, we were sorry to lose him. He was a very good man. So, balik siya to continue the term of his brother. 1993, 2000. And then he became the DTI of President Era. And you know, you can see it on YouTube, President Era had said, of all his cabinet secretaries, the best was Marojas. All right, and under GMA, he was also DTO. What did he do during the time of GMA? And then under Aquino, he was transportation, communication, and then local government. But I have to tell you, in those 22 years that he was here, there has not been a whisper or a suggestion or a rumor that Tunisia na kashin duan or Tunisia na commission. No nothing, no element, not even a whisper that he was corrupt. Because within his own conviction, he has integrity, he has honesty, and wala sa guni-guni niya ang magnaka. Why? It is so easy to steal money when you are in government, when you have power. And dali, dali. But in 22 years of Marawas, you will hear from nobody that he stole anything. No corruption. Next. This is si Mar ng Palakinan, PTO at Call Center sa si Pilipinas. Dahil kay Mar, nagkaroon ng magandang trabaho ang milyong Pilipino. Pati ang pamilya namin, umasenso. Di na kailang mag-abroad. Di na malalayo sa mga mahal sa buhay. Kaya proud kami. You don't know, but when he started it in 2001, there were only 5,000 uh, employees. But now, one million Filipinos, young people, are in the VP of business. Call center, legal research, accounting, backroom. One million who otherwise would have maybe gone abroad or working at SM for six months. One million. And how much money in revenue is that? That is last year, $23 billion. And this is 
is the most important. He started it, but he told his family, Araneta, Rojas, we will not invest in any call center, any BPO, because I don't want people to know I started this for my own benefit. That is the kind of integrity he has. And right now, SM, PLDT, lahat ng mga major companies, meron call center because it's such a money making, but not the Araneta and not the Rojas. Next. Pautang po, magbili ng gamot ni Mrs. Ay, pasensya na dalhin na may sakit na nga yung mahal mo. May gamot naman, pero sobrang mahal. Hindi tama. Kaya kahit alam ko na marami akong makakabangga, pursigido ako na may pababa ang presyo ng gamot. Halos nakalahate ang presyo nitong mga gamot na ito para sa high blood, sa diabetes, sa antibiotic. Sinigurado ko na ang gamot mabibili ng nakakarami. Hindi yung iilan lang. You know what I hear people say, ah, LT is the land, mayaman, walang puso para sa mahira. Look at all of the things he has done that benefits the people. Sino sa lahat ng aking mga government official ang lumabas sa mga pharmaceuticals? They are so powerful. In fact, they, they told the American Embassy, please try to speak to Mar Rojas, kinakalaban kami. And they did. The American Embassy called him. And he said, look, the pharmaceuticals are making so much money. Wala magbabaan nila because diabetes, heart, heart um, ailment, blood pressure, and uh, cancer, you know, that should be available to the people, and he did. Okay, so another, another proof that he may have been born rich, but he knew, he knows how to make things done for the people. Next. Marami pa rin dinaabot ng maiinom na tubig. Sa mga probinsya, sa mga kabukiran, sa kabundukan, wala naman talaga silang potable water. Kaantayin mo kaluminaw yung balon at saka kakukuha ng tubig para meron kang maiinom na konti. Eh, napakahirap kasi po, magbobomba, magbobuha. Eh, buntis pa po ako noon. Nung nalaman ko na ganito ang sitwasyon, talagang tinutukan ko po. Sinimulan natin ang salin tubig para ma-fast forward ang solusyon. Pagbubas nila ng gripo, may malinis na tubig na yan. Kahit anong oras po, pwede po kami maglaba, magpaligo ng bata. Kaya kahit na kami tumanda, mamanahin pa ng mga anak na ano, mga apo na ano, ng tubig na yan. Salamat sa Panginoon Diyos. Napaka-basic ng tubig. Sa dulo nito, merong tao na may baso na ngayon magkakatubig at makakainom. Buhay para sa kanya yan. We are all middle class here. We are all giving a scholarship to anybody. So if anybody tells you, it's a lie. You know, that people have been doing, alam niya kung sino, character assassination of Mar. And that is not true. Because when you say, elitista ka, wala kang ano sa puso, that's not true for all of us. We are a people of compassion. And that goes also for Mar. It's a part. From 918 incidents a week, crime, we're down to 350 a year later. And that 350 is consistent <laughs> and is audited. audited. That is blotter-based. That's not just some fictitious number that precinct uh, policemen send out. That's based on the blotter. How did we do that? It wasn't easy. First, we did an audit of all the blotters in NCR. Next, we geotagged where the crimes were happening. Third, we informed the policemen. We actually did basic business school protocols. If you cannot count it, you cannot manage it. So every week, roughly 500 Filipinos are not victimized by crime because we solved it. Is it glamorous? No. Does it make headlines? No. But there's 500 people every week that are no longer victims of crime. When he was local government, he was shocked that the report of crime is 900 a day here in Metro Manila. And so what did he do? He called all the stakeholders, uh, police, BNP, uh, you know, in the church. Let us study what's, what are the facts. Nakita nila that the crime is highest in certain parts of Metro Manila. So, ilang, how many policemen are on those places? The same as in other places. Wow, sabi yan. Logic. The crime is over here. Let's put more policemen there. And 
then, ano ang kanilang mga defense? Patuta lang. What happened to the uh, uh, arms? Only if they can afford it. Sila pa ang nagagastos ng baril para meron silang baril. So what did he do? He ordered, okay, for all the policemen, guns. So now, from 900 crimes a day, it's down to 300 crimes a day. Crime for end, but at least 500 people have been saved. So that's the kind of sasabihin nyo, at least wala sa puso sa mga mahirap. No, he is a worker, he is a solution maker. Isa pa, he is the only congressman or senator who passed the law that if you are earning minimum wage of 250 a day, bakit ka pa magta-tax? So no income tax. You ask your people, you know, they're receiving only 250 pesos a day, walang income tax yun. That is 700,000 people who are, who are not paying income tax. Tulong din sa tao. So it is so important for now that we continue this the Akma to win. So, Doi Noi chose Mar, but you have to choose a vice president. So, sino ang pinili nila? Lenny Robredo. You will say, sino yan? Bakit si Lenny? Lenny and her husband were members of the Couples for Christ. For those of you who know Couples for Christ, you know they are very faithful to God. They are people of faith. And Lenny and Jesse were Couples for Christ. Now, who is Lenny Robredo? She graduated from UP Economics, and her father, who was a judge, wanted her to be a lawyer. But, alam mo, UP talaga kortado ng utak mo, so she said, wag muna. Recess muna. Kung tapos sa naga, I will work. I will work in this beacon water basin development corporation, headed by a very dynamic uh, president. And who is that? Jesse Robredo. And of course, they fell in love. And they got married. So, postponed ang magiging law student, she got married, and the next year, Jesse Robredo ran for mayor under the Vida Corda. Sino campaign manager? president. At the same time, she became a mother. Okay? So, in all, she had three girls. So, she was campaign manager for Jesse Robredo, mother of three girls, and she went back to law school. Did she finish it in four years? No, it took her seven years. Why? Because that law of anak niyang babae, she's in charge. Piano lesson, punta siya, wita ka, pag-iintay, babalik. So she was a very good mother. Campaign manager, election every three years, siya ang tagahawak ng pera. Siya, you know, you know, she knows everything that she's doing. Law student pa, so she took it in seven years, not four. And then, passing the bar, lumagpak siya the first time. So, sabi niyo, oh, hindi siya nag -aral. Yes, because when she was studying for law review in Manila, nagkadengi yung anak niyang bunso. Bakit siya sa naga? Lagpak sa first time. And do you think that, if that deterred her? No. She's gonna be a lawyer. Because that's what she promised her father. Second time, she passed the bar. She she became a lawyer. Ngayon, saan siya magtatrabaho? Did you show to ang gara? Nothing swelled dyan. Did she go to become a lawyer in uh, uh, San Miguel? Just like some of our senators, one of our senators? Nothing swelled dyan. No. She went to a not-for-profit so that she will be pro bono for farmers and teachers and fishermen and abused women. So, Lenny Robredo talaga serve what either. And when she, when her husband died, alam niyo to, in August 2013, okay? Her husband was asked by Noy Noy to attend a ceremony in Cebu. And instead of going to Cebu Pacific, back to Manila, he said, I want to go to Naga because my daughter is doing a swimming competition. You know, they're very close sila. So, kuha siya ng aeroplano and the airplane sank into the Maspati waters. Nobody knew about it. And when they learned that he died, they were devastated. They were devastated si Lenny at ang kandita kanya at yung anak na babae because they were so close. And shortly after that, Noy Noy asked her to run for Congress. I mean, nakabubiyo na pa lang, election in November. So she was, she hesitated and she talked to her three children. Three daughters. Alam nyo, when I was also widowed, my youngest daughter was so afraid that I will die too. I, I think that's natural for 
children. So, purum purum sila. And then they understood. Sabi ni Nelly, what should be your father say? If this is presented to us as a family, they want me to run for Congress. What would your father say without any question? Papa would say, serve the people. And so she ran and she won against the Villa Fuerte. The Villa Fuerte has been ruler of Camarina Sur for many years. Mayor LJ and Tinga. And El Rey was governor. Uh, Congressman Luis, the husband, was congressman. And the wife was running against her. But in that election, 78% voted for Lenny as congresswoman. And that's why she won. And these are the things that she did in the two and a half years while she was congresswoman. And so, when she was asked by President Onoy and Mark, can you be my vice president? Again, you know, I have to talk to my daughters, I have to pray. Because vice president, ang taas taas yan, successor to the president. And after talking to each other, she asked again the question, what did your father say? Jesse Robredo has been truly a servant of the people. When he was elected, and Villa Porta was telling him, oh, ito mo, you know, how to get money from people. He said, no, I cannot do that. I was elected by the people, and I will follow what the people do. So, Lenny knew that service to the country, service to the people is paramount. And so she asked again her three daughters, ano sasabihin ng tatay niyo? What would your father say? And all three said, Mommy, you have to serve. And so she accepted being vice president. Okay? And this is her brand of leadership. Let's listen to her. Uh, yung, yung, yung sa amin kasi, yung parang, parang yung pinaka-concepto ng pakikila ko. Parang, um, parang nire-recognize mo yung, yung halaga ng bawat, bawat tao. At dahil mahalaga siya, pinapakinggan mo at binibigyan mo ng boses siya para sabihin sa iyo kung ano yung kanyang pangangailangan at palagay niya papano papano niya bibigyan ng solusyon ang kanyang mga pangangailangan. Yung sanaga, yung sanaga po um, nabigyan ng boses yung mga maliliit kasi binigyan sila ng pagkakataong makilahok. Halimbawa, uh, meron kaming empowerment ordinance na pinasa ng aming city council. Yung empowerment ordin ordinance parang parang hinihikayat niya yung lahat na lahat na sektor kahit malalaki ito o maliliit na sektor na mag-organisa. At yun lahat na organisadong sektor, may karapatan na magpadala ng kanilang um, kinatawan sa, sa Naga City People's Council. At yung Naga City People's Council, may kinatawan sa lahat na komite ng City Hall, magmula sa pag-conceptualize pa lang ng mga programa, hanggang sa pag-implement nito, hanggang sa pag-monitor, hanggang sa pag-evaluate, kasali sila. Sa Naga, naging epektibo ito dahil mula sa umpisa pa lang, pinapakinggan na yung pangangailangan ng mga maliliit. Yung, yung asawa ko naman, si Jesse, uh, nung nagsimula kasi siyang maging mayor, kalaban niya yung city council. Kaya sinasabi niya, kung hindi ko makakakampe yung city council, mas mabuti pa na yung didiretsyo na lang ako sa tao. At nung dumiretsyo nga siya sa tao, nakita niya na parang mas maganda patuloy. Mas maganda patuloy nakakampe yung mga tao. Um, walang, walang monopolia yung mga city officials sa paghanap ng solusyon ng mga problema ng tao. Pero parang yung mga iminumungkahing mga solusyon ng mga tao, parang mas magaganda pa sa naiisip nila. So dun, dun nag-umpisa yung pagbibigay ng mas malaking puwang para sa mga taong makilahok. Sa paniniwala na pag yung tao naiintindihan niya kung ano nangyayari sa kanyang gobyerno, mas nagtitiwala siya dito. At yung gobyerno naman pag alam niya na alam ng tao yung kanyang ginagawa, mas sinusubukan niya pang linisin yung sarili. So parang, parang it works both ways na yung tao mas nagiging empowered, yung gobyerno naman mas nagiging malinis. And then this next, this next picture shows who, what kind of person is Lenny, who will be our vice president and eventually, six years later, president. The first one, she's going down the steps. For what? To listen to the president on the sauna. Bakit hindi siya sa harap? Okay? Why? Because ako din, when they attend, isang beses, dalawang beses yata, I attend, is taken, oh, pagandahan ng bihis. Why? Kasi naya lang, 
GMA7, na yan ang APS-CBN, na yan ang, uh, you know, uh, all the channels, and the newspaper, pakampuna ng litrato, kailangan bihis na, and everybody who goes to the front door, nakabihis. But Larry did not go to the front door. Sabi sa kanya sarili, I don't need it, I know who I am, sa likod, para pumunta sa Congress, nasa likod siya. That's the kind of person who knows who she is. The last one, nakatindig sa kalsada, ano ang hinihintay? Bus! <laughs> Tena pa, ng Friday, tapos na ang Congress, he, she's going back to Lala to visit her constituents. Wala ba siyang SUV? Wala ba siyang Toyota man lang? Or even Volkswagen? No. Because her salary is just enough to buy 900 pesos air conditioned bus 10 o'clock to his go to Naga. And in Naga, naroon siya na 6 o'clock, tulog ng konde, 8 o'clock, lakad na siya to each barangay to find out what do they need. That is the kind of person she is, the vice president for Noy for, for Man. Kung wala kurang talaga, wala mahira. But we need not 6 years, not 12 years, we need at least 18 years. We need 18 years for Pinoy up to 2016, Maro has up to 2022, and Lenny, Lenny will be ready. She's an understudy for six years. She will be a very good president in 2022 to 2028. <laughs> and so when you came in, there was a piece of paper given you as an adult. Okay. The piece of paper given you, how do you volunteer? Nakasulat yata dyan. Okay? Please, for those, okay, salamat. Thank you. Okay? Please, you place your, you know, if if you have this, please, fill it up. Fill it up because all of us who are here, who have heard this talk, have a responsibility for our country. We have a responsibility for the rest of the 100 million Filipinos. We may be satisfied, we are maybe living a good life for ourselves, but for the 30 million na kulang pa, na wala kinakain at least isang araw, kulang pa, 4 million lang ang nabigyan ng CCT ng 4 piece. There is another 10 million families. The poor and poor, we owe it to them to volunteer so that all the lies that are given about Mar, ako talaga, in the past 5 years, character assassination. Sobrang ginawa. Natumba naman yung kanyang price motorcyclo nasa front page ng Philippine Daily Inquirer. Oh my God. So, it is up to you. That's why I'm taking this time to talk to all of you. We are maybe probably 150 now. You all have been given the word, the truth. So, please, volunteer for uh, Mar and Lenny. How do you volunteer to recruit secretarial work? So, the media, writing, speakers, bureau, organizing, fundraising, distribution campaign. All right. So, tulong yung tulong niyo sa kampanya. In fact, um, in fact, ang pinakaimportante nito. I am saying, all of us here, all of us here, it's not only one vote. All of you can vote 100 times. Sabi mo ba? Maliyan, no? You can vote 100 times because you have an area, a sphere of influence of 100 people. Katulong na lang nyo. Yung katulong nyo, may mga relatives. Yung mga relatives, may mga neighbor. Yung mga kaklase nyo ng high school, kaklase nyo, like me, kaklase nyo in college, sa inyo mga tatrabahuan, at least 100. So if you talk to one, lalo na yung mga nakakalinig ng mga kasamalaan, ng mga kagulaanan, you have to talk to them to change your mind because the future of our country is at stake. You know, we are said, we are taking off within six years of Pinoy. We are not just cruising. When we fly a plane, the plane can fall. Okay? Ang ating Pilipinas, pwede pa rin lumagpak na naman, magiging na naman, the most corrupt nation in the world. Please, don't let us do that. Because if we do the right thing, May 9, 2016, and we do it again, 2022, with Lenny Robredo, 18 years of good governance, then the Philippines will truly be bayan magile, perlas ng silahanan. The Philippines will finally be our future. Yes. And so, 
all, let us do the right thing this election. Let us tell 100 of our people is starting now. And then, come 2022, the Philippines will be a head nation and no longer be a tail. And then all of us can stand tall and say, I am 